All right, here we are. College basketball. It's time. We're getting into the real juicy parts of the season now. You know, first three months were really, really interesting. But now we're getting into the real meat of it. As, you know, the bubble starts to get important. We enter February. Conference races are heating up. And things are getting more interesting. And let's talk about a couple of headlines that, you know, before we talk about the actual games that happened during the 12th week of the season, let's talk about some headlines. Headlines, you know, first off, Dick Vitale, unfortunately, his vocal cords, you know, they aren't working very well. So, you know, he won't be able to commentate the game for the rest of the year. He's done so much for the game of college basketball. Get well soon, brother. You know, come on back next year. You know, it, it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Everything's going to be fine. The CAA and Missouri Valley have said, you know, let's continue conference realignment. And that's exactly what they did. Now, these three have been rumored for months. The CAA has added Hampton. Hampton, who's wanted to be in the CAA for quite some time now. Stony Brook and Monmouth. All three teams will be joining in 2022. Of course, you know, the fallout, the James Madison drama, you know, that we've been covering from the FCS playoffs and stuff like that. You know, that has been a big thing that has really, you know, catapulted CAA to do the thing they've done. You know, and again, you know, these three additions help bolster, you know, their product for basketball and for football, you know, well, mostly for football, but for basket from a basketball perspective, these are three ads that, you know, they aren't that bad, especially Monmouth, you know, Monmouth's been a team that's been really good over the past few years, so, you know, that's not a bad call at all. Missouri Valley, on the other hand, they needed to go to 12. They wanted to go to 12. You know, they were initially rumored to go to 14 at one point, but obviously we all know that UTA chose the whack, you know, because, again, it just wasn't going to work out, you know, down to the NBC. So Missouri Valley has added Illinois Chicago to replace Loyola Chicago starting in 2022. I don't, I don't know what that means for a, a team like Chicago State, you know, that's looking for a conference. You know, hey, the horizon might be looking for somebody. Um, we'll hope that goes well, but I'm not going to talk about Chicago State right now because that's not important. What is important is that Louisville and Chris Mack, they parted ways. Um, it was supposed to be a $12 million buyout, but now it's like $4 million, I believe. I believe it was like $4 million as reported earlier in the week. Louisville's had a bad year so far. They continue to have a bad year because they lost to Duke. I know they lost to Duke. Um, it's just not been a good year for them. And, you know, it's kind of unfortunate that Louisville's had a bad season because, I mean, this is, a, this is Louisville. This is a basketball school we're talking about here. Like, this just doesn't happen, you know. But, I mean, it happened to Kentucky last year. But, you know, not this time. In Kansas, let's talk about the games now. Let's talk about the games that happened this week, at least some of the bigger ones. You know, anyway, Kansas, they were skating on a thin rope here. They should have lost to Texas Tech. Ochai Abaji got over 30 against Tech. You know, Tech had the lead at various points throughout the game. This game went to double overtime. You know, and it was just a fun, fun game from start to finish. I mean, Tech was fighting in this one. But Kansas, on the other hand, on Saturday, they got whipped by Kentucky. <laughs> they got whipped. Caleb Brooks smacking, smacking the Jayhawks around. Oscar Sheway getting a double-double again, smacking the Jayhawks around. I mean, my goodness. I, I did not expect this at all. But it happened. It happened. Especially Caleb Brooks, you know, he, he was definitely emerging because, I mean, guys like Ty Ty Washington didn't really do too much. But, I mean, you know, Kentucky. Oof, Kentucky. Ooh, he didn't have to beat Kansas like that. I was like, man, I can't believe I, I, I was about to watch this game. Because I, I, I kind of figured the Big 12 SEC Challenge wasn't going to go the way it was supposed to go. You know, to me, the Big 12 is a meat grinder. I mean, again, you see Kansas barely skating by in conference play. So you knew, you knew something was going to happen at some point. So Kansas getting smacked like that, that, that that's definitely a good sign. Definitely a good sign. From my end, you know, as a Kansas hater. Uh, Michigan State, I, I, I just don't know what in the world happened. They lost by missing a foul shot. 
with less than a second. Yeah. Like, Illinois, they still don't have Kofi Coburn. Like, I have no idea when this man will be coming back. Because, I mean, they, they said last week it was like a concussion. This week he's still concussed. This week he was still concussed. You know, things uh, things weren't adding up. And Trent Frazier for Illinois was the one that had to step up because Andre Cabello was out again. You know, I mean, again, you know, Illinois had other playmakers. And Illinois, they stepped up in the best way. And now, you know, things, the Big Ten are getting a little bit murkier because, you know, Michigan State had to lead the Big Ten, but now Illinois does, I believe. So, you know, there's that. On the other hand, Arizona, I don't know what in the world is wrong with y'all. What what happened? What happened? Y'all shot 25% from three. Seven of 28 from three. Terrible. UCLA had four guys go over 10 points each. They, they were schooling. The, this, this Arizona team got schooled by the Bruins. And they play yet again this Thursday. A lot earlier, though. A lot earlier, so you don't have to wait until, like, midnight if you want to watch Arizona UCLA Part Two, you can get that early, get that out the way early. You know, and enjoy your evening, enjoy your Thursday evening, heading get the Friday by watching the game. But we'll talk about we'll talk about some of these other games in a minute here. Uh, again, just just a poor performance from Arizona, and Arizona also has a big week ahead. You know, we already talked about UCLA, but I mean, uh, we'll talk about another team in a moment who will be facing. Um, Aljabi Durham and Providence they they did it again they did it again they beat Xavier they beat Marquette earlier this afternoon I mean I mean Durham put Xavier's defense on skates I mean he was schooling them schooling schooling Xavier schooling them and, and again Providence you know that that game against Marquette was a was a thriller from start to finish you know but you know Providence Providence you know building up that resume honestly I don't understand why people are you know doubting Providence I get it there's been some games you know with some COVID issues and stuff like that yada 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 team's not at full strength yada 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 but Providence you know they have the resume they have they have the it factor really Honestly, I, I know te- I know some teams are being pushed up to the one line like Wisconsin, but I mean honestly, if I'm being serious, I, I think Providence should be you know at the one line. I honestly think they should be because they just have it's one of the best in the country, one of the best. In all honesty, um, Duke on the other hand, again they had beaten Louisville, but they had to survive against Clemson and Auburn. They they survived Missouri. But they whipped Oklahoma, which was, you know, also a good thing because I hate Oklahoma as a Texas fan. Um, so that that was just cause for concern, you know, this week. But Alabama, Alabama might be the Jekyll and Hyde this year because they lost to Georgia, but they beat Baylor. I I do not understand this at all. I really don't like. Georgia is the worst team in the SEC, I believe. You know, Georgia, Georgia ain't known for their college basketball. We know this, so. You know, uh, I'm sitting here just perplexed and flummoxed that Alabama lost to Georgia, but they beat Baylor. I'm, I'm just sitting here perplexed. It's crazy. It's crazy stuff. If you wanted to watch Delaware Towson, you could because the game got suspended. I don't think they made it up yet. I don't think they made it up because the court was being uh, the court was deemed unsafe because it was so slippery and stuff like that. Like players were slipping and stuff all over the court. So Delaware and Towson, I believe they did play on Saturday. Um, you know, again, just for you CAA joyers out there. You know, I, I do not know if they're going to make that game up anytime soon because that, that's all the things that I can, you know, find for it. Just the one article late, uh, I believe it's like either Wednesday or Thursday night. You know, I can't remember exactly when I found it, found this out because, I mean, it was, it was, I was looking, you know, at the timeline on Twitter and I was like, wait, what? What's going on with this game? What? And, you know, it just happened to be that. Happened to be that. Uh, Stanford, they beat USC. I, I do not know what I, I really don't know what's wrong with USC at times. I do not know what's wrong with the Pac-12. Pac-12, you know, is on something else. They are on something else, man. On something else. Boise State, on the other hand, they've won 14 straight. 
which is insanity. And, you know, the Mountain West, you know, a lot of people haven't really been talking about the Mountain West as much, you know, but the Mountain West could steal some bids, you know. Utah State also learning in San Diego State, still a damn good team in their own right, you know. So we have to watch out for the Mountain West in the next couple weeks, especially with the bubble being the way it is. It's it's a weird, it's going to be a weirder bubble this year, I imagine, you know. It's going to be real weird. Uh, but then, it, and then going back to Xavier real quick, because, I mean, the, not only did they get schooled by Aljabi Durham and Providence, they they were getting whipped by Creighton. Like, they, they, were, they, were getting, they were getting smacked by Creighton. It was like, I checked the score, and it was like early in the first half, it was like 36 to 19 Creighton, and then Xavier came back beat a bite's head so i don't know what kind of xavier team we're getting you know at this point either because i mean i haven't watched a lot of xavier this year i don't know why i haven't been able to but i mean xavier's a team that's you know it's just it's just like uh, uh, i don't know these past couple weeks hey they they ain't been they've been proven they ain't been proving themselves that i want to you know keep my eyes on them but you know here we are you know here we are with that so we already talked about Providence, you know, beating Marquette. You know, again, Marquette's a damn good team in their own right, you know, too. So the Big East, Big East is a, definitely a conference that has really improved. You know, a lot of people, I believe I said a couple weeks ago that Bill Louisville was just running roughshod over the conference. That is not the case. We know that now. That is not the case. Um, so the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Let's go back to that real quick. SEC won the challenge. Yeah, 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 whatever, man. Yeah, whatever. Um, again, you know, LSU, they lost TCU. Again, TCU is a damn good team, by the way. So, you know, they got beat up by Texas, but they come back, beat LSU. Again, Bama beat Baylor. Kansas got smacked around by Kentucky. Texas and Tennessee had one of the worst games in Rick Barnes' return. I mean, it was just one of the worst games I think I've ever seen in my entire life because Texas, you know, gave up a lead in which they had back to Tennessee, Tennessee at point, I mean, again, both these teams just had points, you know, and not like actual points, we're talking at certain points during the game, they just did not score any points, like, I think Texas went like four or five minutes without scoring, and I know Tennessee only had like five points during the first ten minutes of the second half, and it, it, was, just, it was just that bad, man, like, Texas finally gets a signature win, but at what cost? Because, I mean, this is one of the ugliest games. And I get it. Both these teams have some damn good defenses, but it's just ugly. Ugly, ugly college basketball that turns turns a lot of people off. It turns me off, you know, especially with my team, you know, my, my horns playing such ugly basketball. So it's just, it's, just, it's just sad, you know, to watch. But... Hey, Texas finally has a big win. They're in the top half of the Big 12 right now, so that is all good. That's all good. So why don't we get into this week? Because we have a lot of questions coming into this week as Kansas takes on Iowa State, so that's going to be part two of that. That was a thriller a few weeks back. Chris Beard, he's going back to Texas Tech, you know, so the Longhorns will be taking on Texas Tech in the first of two meetings, and I believe the other one is like on an early Saturday morning in a couple weeks so you know that's gonna be real intriguing so the beard versus tech storyline that's gonna be real fun and Auburn also has the Jekyll Hyde of college basketball in Alabama Auburn already beat Alabama early in the season in a tough game but you know this is this is an Alabama team that is unpredictable in how things are gonna go Wisconsin Illinois First place in the Big Ten should be on the line. A lot of people, you know, are putting Wisconsin on the one line for some reason, which again I just don't seem to get. So I, again, I, maybe I haven't been watching much Wisconsin basketball this year, but I just do not understand it. You know how Wisconsin, you know, is a one seed type team. You know, uh, Villanova Marquette. That's also going to be on Wednesday. That's going to be real fun. Again, the Big East ain't no joke this year. Um, and Villanova also has UConn on Saturday, so don't get the gauntlet that is the Big East, you know, definitely talking a lot more about the Big East, you know, here, it's going to be real intriguing to see how Villanova navigates these two games, you know, Marquette and UConn both should be ranked, I don't know how the AP poll and stuff like that's going to work out, 
course, Thursday, I already talked about that. UCLA, Arizona. That's going to be interesting if Arizona can keep it together. I know they had some guys injured as well during their first matchup, but can they keep it together this time? You know, can Arizona make it a cohesive game? Because there's been some games this year where I've watched Arizona. You know, the Tennessee game, the UCLA game, they, they just weren't, they, they did not look very good, you know. And then there's also the Kentucky-Alabama matchup. I forgot which day that is. I don't know when that is. I think that's a Saturday. I, I think it might be like a Tuesday or Wednesday or something. No, that no, that's a Saturday. Excuse me, I forgot. That is a Saturday, so... Kentucky, can they continue their dominant winning ways? Again, this Alabama matchup is very intriguing. I forgot Kentucky plays Vanderbilt earlier in the week, so you know, circle that on your calendars for Saturday, but also circle these other two games as well. Again, Arizona, big week for them. They're taking on USC, and then Baylor, Kansas. Oh, boy. First place in the Big 12. You know, Baylor's had some guys out, you know, but I mean, things are looking, things are looking damn good, you know. Baylor and Kansas both cut off bad losses. Not not like bad in the sense that, you know, these are bad for their resumes, but bad in the sense that, hey, the, these two teams just simply lost. And it's just surprising that they did, you know. There's also Duke, North Carolina, but who cares about Duke, North Carolina? Rank Miami, please. Miami's first in the ACC. Somebody rank them. And then there's some other, you know, since we're getting into February, we need to start talking a little bit more about the mid-majors because a lot of teams in the ACC probably aren't going to make the tournament. I just don't see that. I don't see a lot of bids coming from the from the ACC. I do see a lot coming from the Big East. I do see a lot coming from the SEC. Big 12, I don't see a lot coming from the Pac-12, though. You know, again, ACC, ugh, it's so gross to watch, um, you know. Did I, did I forget somebody? I don't, I don't know. ACC, Big Ten. Well, Big Ten's going to have a lot of teams in. Probably not Michigan, though. You know, you can you can cut Michigan out right now. And speaking of the Big Ten, if you watch Jaden Ivey, you know, just one more little recap thing here. Jaden Ivey, boy, that boy can shoot. That brother can shoot. Another crucial shot to hit the game winner against Ohio State. You know, Purdue had a lead. Like, I was watching this game, and Purdue had the lead. They were up by like 15, and yet Ohio State was able to come back with Liddell and company. But, man, and Purdue, I don't think Purdue's playing anybody noteworthy this week, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but going back to, you know, what I was talking about, the mid-majors and stuff like that. Mountain West, we already talked a little bit about them. With Boise State winning 14 straight games. Can the Mountain West get a bunch of bids? Can the West Coast Conference steal a bunch of bids? Because a lot of people earlier in the season were like, yo, the WCC can get four bids. I don't think that's the case now because of BYU, you know, continuing to, you know, not look that great. And the rest of the West Coast Conference just being behind Gonzaga again. I know. Same old, same old. What about the OVC? There's Belmont, Murray State, and Moorhead State in the OVC. So it's looking pretty interesting. You know, could we see something like that? Three-bid OVC. The whack. It was so much fun, so much more fun than I thought it would be, you know. It's definitely turning into a basketball conference worthy of watching again because Seattle leads the conference, but they take on New Mexico State and Grand Canyon. I wanted to talk about the WAC last week, but New Mexico State got smacked around by, I believe they got smacked around by Sam Houston, and that's why, and Sam Houston's also, you know, in the race at the top of the WAC, so, you know, things look interesting you know, there's a lot of conference leaders, you know, that are like 10 and 0 right now in conference, like South Dakota State from the Summit, and uh, I believe like Vermont from the America East. You know, I think it's Vermont. It's like 10 and 0 in conference play. You know, again, a lot of these mid majors, they ain't no joke. We know that. Small schools, you know, the little guys, they ain't no joke. Kids can ball, you know. So watch out for the mid majors as we continue to talk about them throughout the month. I'll do like a little bubble watch thing here, you know, in my notes and stuff like that real soon. So we'll get that going, you know, to see, you know, what what kind of what kind of bubble we're working with as we head closer and closer to March Madness. So and if we know when March Madness begins, right? Yeah. The, the middle of March. Yeah. You know, 
I believe it was like March 17th. I saw the Pro Bowl earlier, so let's do this, guys. Let's do this. And let's have a great week 13 of college basketball because it's going to be real lit. And for those of you that are still watching, you know, that made it to the end, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the good stuff, and I'll see you again on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, because we got a channel update. You know, February 1st means channel update. Yeah. So, see you on Tuesday, everybody.